Well, we're going to in-person uh, church. For those of you who aren't able to join us and are at home, welcome as well. We'll continue to live stream these services as we are very sensitive to those who don't feel quite ready yet to join in-person uh, gatherings. And so for them, we are going to continue to live stream. So welcome to everybody who's out there and those of you who are here. I would draw safety protocol that is on the back of the um, bulletin. Please wear your masks in and out of the church when you get up and when you're making any kind of vocal response. So even if you're saying, and also with you to the responses, just slip your mask on. But if you're just sitting there listening um, or in worshiping, you can take your mask off. Uh, while you're seated. But we appreciate you um, adhering to those rules. Uh, they are for everybody and the safety and health of all who are gathered. There is, um, of course, um, hand sanitizer at the back of the church. We ask you to use that on the way in and the way out. And if you don't have a mask, we have several at the back, both disposable and some. Jeanette Baxley has made the most comfortable mask to me that exists. And I think we have a few of those at the back as well. So thank you so much. It's a blessing to have everyone here. Thank you, Daniel and the choir and Paige for being here as well to share your talents with us in these days of, of kind of thing where things aren't quite normal, but, um, but maybe it's the new normal. So we appreciate that. A few quick announcements. As you know, we're doing announcements prior to the service rather than in the middle of the service. Operation Christmas Child continues to collect items we are doing this through Sunday, October the 31st, and then we will pack all of those up in boxes that will go to all parts of the globe. What we need is, of course, on this flyer that is inside your bulletin, and that would include toys, a whole list of toys that are there, school supplies, hygiene items, and other things like gum, <laughs> T-shirts, socks, ball caps, sunglasses, and other things, but all of those are outlined here. And this week, if you'd like to stop by the store, pick up a few items and drop them by the church office Monday through Thursday from 8 to 12.30, we would welcome all of those items. Again, that is for Operation Christmas Child. And look for the date that we will put all of those boxes together in the coming weeks. Also, there is at the back of the church something called a season of prayer for an election uh, that we um, actually gleaned from the um, Forward Day by Day movement. And there's just some wonderful prayers for our country and for all of those who are discerning uh, election time. So we appreciate that. And this is a way to keep all of that in our nation in your prayers. The food pantry continues to be open Tuesdays from 9.30 to 11. If you know of someone who is in need of food assistance, please send them our way. And even if it's not Tuesday, uh, we will help them out with food. So have them call the church office. And if you'd like to make a donation of food items, you may do that by bringing that food by from 8 to 12.30, Monday through Thursday. If you're at the store, just pick up an extra couple of jars of peanut butter, some pasta, other non-perishable items, rice, beans, other items, canned goods, items that we can put in those uh, food boxes to give out to those who are in need. We appreciate your continued support of that vital ministry. I would normally, I'm going to say it anyway, you know, I can't, I don't, I'm going to say it again, but I'm used to saying after the announcements, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. So we thank God for that offering as we offer ourselves, our attention, our hearts, our voices, and all that we are in worship to God. Thank you for being here.
service right to begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletins. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebu to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead, as far as Dan and Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, the land of Judah, as far as the western sea, the Negev and the plain, that is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees as far as Zor. The Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth, Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab for 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent to him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land, and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please remain seated to say Psalm 90, verses 1 through 6 and 13 through 17 in unison. The reading can be found in your bulletin insert. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, O child of earth, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. Return, O Lord, 
How long will you tarry? Be gracious to your service. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show us your sorts of works and your splendor to their children. May the gracious of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. A reading from St. Paul's first epistle to the Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we have already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we are gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
God before us, God beside us, God behind us, God above us. Be also now between us a bridge through which your truth may move. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated. What time is it? Now? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right now. That's why I guess you're saying, thank goodness he's watching the time, right? <laughs> That's great. That was a good one, Paige. Well, we all have watches. I'm sure everybody just looked down, or if you didn't have a watch, you looked at your phone or whatever it is that you use to tell what time it is. You probably, Paige, clearly you've shown your hand, are looking at your watch during my sermon. Um, you know, maybe this is going a little long, so you kind of are looking at that, seeing, well, it's 16 minutes today. He's wound up. What's going on? The first Sunday we came back after the hiatus from in-person gatherings, everybody was like, man, you were all wound up, and you just kept going and going and going. Yes, I did. <laughs> just wait. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The, um, I can remember being at a fall festival in Montgomery once, and the, the kind of one of the bouncy rides that they had that was there is one of the only rides they had. So, of course, the line was all the way back to the parking lot. And we were standing in line, and I saw a parishioner and, you know, kind of waved and then continued to stand in line and was there for at least a half hour. And she came back by and she said, you've been in this line almost as long as one of your sermons. <laughs> I was like, yeah, thank you, maybe, you know, what? I preach long? Are you kidding me? Um, but we're all aware of time. I can remember going back to St. Joseph, Missouri, to the home of my great-grandparents. We were there for a funeral, unfortunately, but we went back to their house. And I've talked about this before, I'm sure, but I can remember their garden that used to seem like it was the 100-acre wood, right? I mean, it was huge. And I went back, and it was about as big as three of these pews in a box, and I thought... This was the garden that was so big. And I can remember being across the street from their home um, in a field, and they had this tire swing over there, and I would be out there, and I'd go stay with them for a week or two over the summer. And I can remember spending what seemed like an eternity in that field because there were no kids around. They lived out in the country, and I was just there by myself, you know, with a tire swing all day long. And I can remember going in and saying to my great-grandma, it just, it just, this is never going to end, you know? I didn't know how to, I, I didn't preface it with, I love you, but, you know, I just went in saying, gosh, this is just so boring, and it just seems like it goes on forever. And I will never forget what she said to me. She said, just wait until you turn 18, and then it will fly by. And she was so right, and it gets faster and faster as I hit the middle and I start the downhill slide, right? It just goes by in a blink of an eye, even the year 2020, which I guess for many seems like it will last an eternity, is flying by in the blink of an eye. And when we look at the short amount of time that we have been given, in many ways we can turn in on ourselves. We can begin to think, well, what have I accomplished? Right, have you ever met somebody that's like your age or a few years younger that has won the Nobel Prize and has traveled the world and done all these things and you're like, well, what have I been doing my whole life, right? You know, what's going, where have I been spending my time? But we can turn in on ourselves what I have to do, what I have to be, what my legacy will be, what all of the things that tend to be all about us and all about what we're doing. Um, and we've all been around people like this, and we have been those people in some situations, I'm sure. At least I know I have been. And we've been around them in business, politics, and family, and it can be insufferable. And often, the decisions that they make with that mindset can cause great harm. Because what it does is you turn in on yourself, and you are no longer making decisions for the benefit of a business, it's all about the short term. How can I look good? How can I be a good president or CEO or manager? What are the decisions that I can make that will ultimately be about my legacy and about me? 
And that can prevent you from making decisions that are the best for the whole in the long run. We see it as well in politics. Well, what do the polls say? And as long as I'm looking good in the polls, that's what matters, right? It's not about the decisions that may not be popular today, but that ultimately will be good for the stability of a country in the long run. And that is not a political statement. All politicians do it, right? We all do that at one time or another in our lives. It's all about the stock price in business. And therefore, we're not investing many times in the long run of the future. The part that all of those who are sending you notes or giving you calls can't see the long run, right? Your stockholders, whatever it is. We do the same thing in our families. And often we come to the end when we are operating like that and we run out of time. And many get to a point where they say, what's the use? I mean, it's all the same. I mean, we live, we go to school, we work, we retire, we die. Well, what difference does it all make? And many of us have probably been at that point in our lives. If you've had a midlife crisis, or an end-of-life crisis, or a crisis in the I see people nowadays, I see kids that wonder about what, what school they're going to get into having a crisis, right? We're, we're training our kids to think like people in middle life, and we're robbing them of the, of the ability to just enjoy it all because they're all worried about time. They're all worried about legacy. They're all worried about me. Well, I must get to the point, right? Because I don't want you looking at your watches. Because I know we all have places to go and people to see. This is the sermon where I should talk about one of the greatest things, one of the greatest scriptures in the whole of Holy Scripture. What is the greatest commandment? Jesus answers them, the lawyers. I can say that because I'm, I'm a lawyer, right? Um, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And I could do again today what I have done many times, and that is to talk about love. And many times when we talk about love, we talk about it in these kind of esoteric terms that are things that we kind of know but we can't really grasp and it's love and I know I should love my neighbor and I know I should love God but and, and you talk about us being love and having love in us and all of that but at the end of the day I leave sermons like that including my own and think well what does that mean I get it right I know the greatest commandment we get beat over the head with it and that's not in a bad way it's good I need to be reminded. But at the end of the day, love can be a term that I just can't get my arms around. All right, love, great, another sermon on love. It's in me, it's in you, it's in the world. Well, what does it mean? How do, how do I live that way? How do I do that? Preacher, <laughs> right? Well, I wanna look at the Old Testament and the psalm as one way to love. Because I think it gives us some indication, some key. And from breaking out of that mindset that I talked about earlier, which when we turn in on ourselves, we are doing anything but loving. Because it's not about the grand plan. It's not about God. It's about us. It's not about our neighbor. It's about us at the end of the day, whatever we say with our mouths. So we have Moses in our Hebrew scriptures lesson. Um, and he has led the people of Israel out of bondage to the edge of the promised land, right? They've wandered around the wilderness and they're finally there on Mount Nebo. And you can look out at, on it all. If you've ever been on Mount Nebo, you can see the Dead Sea over here and you can almost see the Sea of Galilee over here and in the middle is the promised land. And you can imagine that view, what he saw there. I've led them to this point. But then what does scripture tell us? You're not going to be able to go there. Sorry, Moses. Because of some of the things that you did, you know, you kind of forced your hand, forced God's hand. You're not going to be able to do that. Thank you very much. 
And if you had been like me, I mean, if I had been Moses, I may have just sat down and said, well, fine then, I quit. If I can't go into the promised land, if I can't have this glory, everything I've worked for, then forget about it. I'm just going to sit down right here and you can lead them in there on your own. They can find their own way. I don't think I'm alone in that. I'm not getting my accolades. All my time has been wasted. That's not what Moses did. You see, the life of Moses, if you think about it, and you think about it in the context of time, so he was in Egypt, he was raised as royalty, he had it all going on. He then became outraged at a Hebrew who was being mistreated, so he kills an Egyptian and has to flee. He goes to the land of Midian, is in the wilderness, and he lives there for 40 years. 40 years. You know, I always think he's still kind of this young man when the burning bush, when he faces God in the burning bush. You know, he's probably 20-something when he went to Midian. He was there for 40 years before he was ever called to do anything. 40 years, the prime of his life, he spent in this desolate place. If I had been Moses, I don't know about you, I could have been very bitter about that. When God finally came to me, I could have said, well, where have you been for the last 40 years? Forget you, I'm going to stay right here. Cut your nose off to spite your face, right? We're all experts at that. You've wasted my time. Why should I give you my time? And yet he gave his time to something larger than himself, to something that he knew he might not see the end of, and even at a point he knew he wouldn't get to see, get to enter that promised land, but he continued anyway because he knew his life was a part of something larger than himself, was something larger than he could see, So the decisions that he made were not just about today and tomorrow. They were about 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, a generation down the line. So let's look at the psalm, because I love Psalm 90. And it's one of many that they think Moses actually wrote. You know, you grow up thinking, well, Moses wrote all the psalms. Well, they are a hodgepodge of different authors, right? But a lot of people think, well, Moses had to have written this one. And he gives this perspective on how to look at time. And we must view it from a different vantage, the larger picture, the larger context. In that psalm, it says that, that you are a refuge from one generation to another. When you hear that kind of language, it's talking about something eternal, not something tomorrow, not something in a week, but something that is eternal. It is everlasting to everlasting. You turn us back to dust. No matter what you have accomplished, at the end it all returns to dust. Time to God is a thousand years, is a day, or like a watch. A watch was about three hours. Your life is so brief that it is futile for you to try to create something meaningful on your own. We must be a part of something larger. The larger life of God. A life that is eternal. So you take your life and you interject that into God's life and that is the grand story. You get 70 or 80 years is what the psalm says, but eventually it ends. But Moses talks about the larger life of God. If we could see God as he is, We would give him the reverence he is due. We would present to him our years in the context of the greatness that he is doing. Because we can't see clearly, so what do we do? We can't see that eternal life clearly, so what do we do? We think that when our lives end on this earth that it ends forever, but we're a part of an eternal life of God, so it doesn't. So what do we do? Well, it's the one verse that we left out of our lectionary today, and it's verse 12 of Psalm 90, and it says, So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. You ever numbered your days? Well, I've got an exam next Friday, so that means if I study this day, this day, and that day, then I ought to get enough done. Well, we are getting, we have an 11-month engagement, so... That means that we need to do this by this date and that by that date and this by this date. Number your days. 
And when you number your days, you can begin to see what you have to do, that we don't have an unlimited amount of time, so we get on with it. But we get on with it not for ourselves, but for the larger life of God. And when we think in eternal context, we begin to make decisions that might not be the best for us. They might not make us the most popular boy or girl on the block. But they are decisions that have ripples that last from generation to generation. They impact our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and children that we will never know. Because it's not about us. As much as we want to think it is about us. As much as even when we say, well, it's not about me, we're really thinking, it kind of is about me. Well, let me disabuse myself of that idea. Because I often think that. And I know I'm not alone. It is not. It is not about my popularity. It is not about whether you like me or not. But the decisions that we make are made for the eternal life of the divine. And when we do that, we can love. We can truly love God and the life of God. But we can also truly love others. It's because we are not making decisions for ourselves, but we are making decisions for the life of our community, for the life of the people around us, and for the life of the people we don't even know yet. For that is the life of the eternal God. What time is it? Well, that's something you'll have to answer for yourself and for the relationship that you have with God. What are we doing with our time? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Amen. my mask. Let us stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people this morning are form two, found on page 383 of the Book of Common Prayer. At the silence after each bidding, the people offer their own prayers, either silently or aloud. 
With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for Justin, our Archbishop, Michael, our Presiding Bishop, Russell, our Bishop, John, our Priest, and for this gathering and for all ministers and people, let us pray to the Lord. For goodwill among nations and for the well-being of all people. We pray especially for those in positions of authority, especially Donald, our president, Kay, our governor, Jack, our mayor, and all others who must make decisions on behalf of communities. We pray for our nation's armed forces at home and abroad, first responders everywhere, and all of those who stand in harm's way. Let us pray to the Lord. For this city of Eufaula, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. For the aged and infirmed, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, We give thanks for the life and ministry of Will Goff, Kevin Potoff, and Joanne Little as they celebrate their birthdays this week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For those on our parish prayer list, especially Ryan, Lee, Ann, Liz, Dot, Freddie, Lisa, and Chuck, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Adam Nix, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. In the communion of James and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. God. Almighty God, for those cares and concerns we have spoken aloud, those named in our hearts, and those known only to you, we offer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us socially distanced give a sign of peace to our neighbor. Peace. Peace to all.
We will not take up a traditional offering today, but there are offering plates at the back of the church for your use. And for those who are at home, we have ways through our website, various ways to give to the life and ministry of St. James. We thank you in advance for your consideration and your support. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. stand. We continue with the Holy Eucharist, Eucharistic Prayer A, which is found on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, our Lord took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
and we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Jesus Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
page 365, let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you. Do not live in fear. Remember that God made you, God loves you, and God in God's loving kindness will never forsake you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you all.